So in this crazy market, you've decided just buy a piece of land and build a house. Well, this is everything that you should know or that you shouldn't know. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Moving Forward TV. I am Delyn Gaston and Barry Horvath is MIA. <laughs> so I have my my Barry sit in with me today. We I'm have Barry. We have Gigi. <laughs> Say hi. Hi, I'm Gigi with Dynamic Title. And so last week you may remember that Gigi and I were having this um, conversation about people who just can't afford, I shouldn't say can't afford, can't find houses. The affording thing is a whole nother show. <laughs> but they can't find houses. It's this crazy market going on and it's pretty much nationwide. So Gigi and I are both getting a lot of questions about, um, you know what, I can't, I can't seem to, to get a house. I'm just, how about, a, is my pre-approval still good if I just buy a piece of land and build a house on it or put a mobile home on it or something like that. So Gigi and I kind of got into s some of that last week and we realized that we were in over our head <laughs> when we started talking. So we brought in, and I'd like to introduce Connie Luco. Welcome, Connie. Thanks for being here. Just say hi and say who you are so people know. Hi, I'm Connie Luco. I'm with Remax Sunset Realty, so I'm an agent. And she is also um, working with people on new construction right now, some clients of hers, as well as, <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't mind me sharing, she's in the midst of building her house herself. Well, not, she's not building her house herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> right. So um, it, some of the things that people um, should know, and as Gigi said, or shouldn't know, uh, that goes on. So like I said, Gigi and I were kind of in over our heads, so we decided to um, have Connie kind of come in and give us some of the ins and outs. Now, most of our um, audience, Connie, is realtors like yourself. So, um, and, and because, have you found that there's an increase because of the shortage of how existing homes, people, a lot of people are turning to new construction right now, right? Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, yes, very much so. <laughs> if I can't find a house and they've been going on for months and months, they're getting discouraged, buyers right. are. So what I am recommending to some of my clients is to go to new new builds. Yeah. Because uh, there's not the housing market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, but it's a harsh world out there in the new build world, too. Um, Are you second-guessing your advice some days? <laughs> with my build, yes. I'm second-guessing everybody that I'm turning on to new builds. Uh, the product is great, but it is torture even as an agent for what I know. Um, I can be dangerous a little, but for somebody that doesn't know, my first advice is to make sure you have an agent um, or the agent goes with you to the new build place immediately, right. um, first time, or you're not in, in the mix. And regardless of whether they're buying, from my understanding, regardless of whether they're just going to go and buy, like, you know, one of those out there on 54 where there's all the subdivisions going up, the, right. the whole Starkey Ranch and everything else, whether they're just going to buy those, and those, by the way, are just, those not construction lending, those are end loans. Mm -hmm. The builder's going to do everything and sell you the finished product after you've picked out your paint and your, you know, uh, floor coloring and things like that. Correct. That's different, but you still as an agent need to go with your client. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, the new home builders are, you have to be there with the initial visit that your clients do. You have to be there with them because, or you don't get the commission I was and say. you can't help your client. They will leave you out of the email threads and the transaction completely. 
And even if it is a, um, you know, the end loan kind of a thing, mm -hmm. you know, for, for Gigi's perspective in title and my perspective in lending, it's no different than buying an existing house exactly. because it's, it's just one thing. But from the buyer standpoint, what they're getting is way different. When you in an existing home, you walk in, you see it, you pretty much know everything that's there. You do a walk through the day before closing or the day of closing, and for the most part, everything is still there. But as it's being built, is it being built to your specifications? And that's where mm. an agent comes in. So absolutely, they need representation. I am doing a couple right now. One is one of those homes that is a you know a cust it's not a custom build but it cookie is cutter. a cookie cutter one in a association that's Gigi's term. sorry <laughs> yeah, that's okay. sorry you home builders out there I love that <laughs> um, but one of the ones that are being you know they go up real fast in the neighborhood uh, you still need the one I'm working on I'm still um, doing leg work between the lender and, and the, the buyer um, to get you know an elevation certificate and, and stuff like that for them and if you don't have somebody that knows you're in the dark the custom built homes the one I'm building is torture and I know enough to be dangerous but 15 months of a build uh, is crazy out there wow. and you have to be your own advocate. Is it's it getting tough. any shorter, have you seen? I know, because I think you entered into your contract kind of at the height of the craziness, I, um, I want to say. I was before COVID was COVID. Right. Right. I didn't know what COVID was, what right. was coming. So it was right before all of the shutdowns and the, you know, and, the ships sitting out in port, not being able to get in. And But that didn't make it any easier because then we fell in line with the products not being available. Right. And ours sat as well as everybody else's. Uh, I know the the custom builders are saying 18 months now. They're still so saying it's 18 not months. getting any better it's because not. supply and, and demand is huge, and they can't get the product. Windows you know, are holding people up now. I saw something on um, I don't know where I was looking, but somewhere online everything's online. I saw that there's a whole bunch of ships just sitting out yeah. there with California. Is that where it is? Yeah, that's where they're hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, they're all hanging out, like sitting out. They can't get in. Why? What? Well, that's probably a whole other show oh, that's, too, yeah. right? <laughs> another one. Yeah. <laughs> See, I got all these shows lined up now. I need to. Um, but anyway, so let's get it, talk about the construction and everything. So we already know. So you know, if if they want to go and buy the cookie cutter house, <laughs> we were going to call them spec homes. Yeah. If I remember, spec correctly. were spec, spec homes. Sorry, to that all is of our what builders they're out there. Yes. That is what they're called, actually. Yes. yes. The spec homes, which is fine, and they still get to pick their carpet and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, they actually truly don't. Oh. In spec <laughs> homes, they are the model that you see is pretty much what you get in a spec home. Oh. Um, hmm. Certain spec builders out there are now taking off backsplashes as well because they can't get them. So they are what you see there. Um, the slab goes up and they build them all identical. That's a spec home. So uh, but, you don't but, uh, get aren't the colors pick. different? You can't no. pick your own carpet? Not mm -hmm. usually in a spec home. Oh, wow. They buy the product. They have it oh, there. they buy a bunch so of So they it can go up fast. It. Yes. Okay. So it might be day. an option in some of the builders. A couple of the ones, like the one my buyer has right now that he's buying, he, can't he pick couldn't anything. pick anything. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That's why a custom build home is a little bit different. You can pick from start to finish everything that goes in that house. So let's talk about that. Mm. <laughs> let's talk about a custom built home because that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And again, talking to your fellow agents here, what they should know um, entering it with their client who sits there and says, I can't find a house. Can you just find me a piece of land and I want to build a house? <laughs> where, do we, where do we start, Connie? <laughs> So Gigi is an expert on that. I will say I didn't know a few things till yesterday talking with Gigi that um, is happening within our custom built house uh, and for another client because some of the properties you may need to split, right. which means you have to go to the county and 
That's a fun experience. That's fun. Yes. <laughs> Three days at the county, and Gigi helped me more in an hour <laughs> yesterday than, than anything. But uh, it depends. If the land is raw, you've got impact fees that you have to account for. Uh, different counties are different fees, totally. Um, but you have to ask for the impact fees so you know them up front. You have to get the contract signed. You have to find a piece of land. You can either find your own land or some of the custom builders do the lot with the land already. And impact fees, backing up for a quick second, just give people a rough idea of how much those cost. And I know they're going to be all over the place, but... <laughs> so. Ours in Pasco County were roughly twenty-one to twenty-eight thousand, <laughs> which is down. Which that's what you were yep. saying yesterday. Um, Hernando County, our custom builder gave us seven thousand dollars towards impact fees. Hernando counties are a, a lot less than Pasco, um, but so. you know, I learned the other day at the county there's a couple tiers too. If it is raw land, if if, if it has been semi-cleared land. Um, and it had a mobile on it that is past a certain age of, I, I believe it was 1985, then there's tiers to those impact fees, and I didn't know that either. So you don't know what you don't know, and you need representation from an agent if you're right, a buyer. Right, right. And, and if you are an agent, definitely. You, to, you need representation <laughs> yeah. from somebody <laughs> to figure oh, it out. Oh, Connie, she's learning all about it. <laughs> oh, so, and, I want, and I want everybody to understand that those impact fees are over and above your down payment and your closing costs. So this is... Right. This is, and when are those paid? Are those paid at the closing? I so, don't even know. so there's different kinds of loans. The the pre-construction to the permanent loan that we got included everything in it. Um, okay. Even the interest, we didn't pay the interest every draw. So, so the an agent did. who is working with a client who decides they want to buy a house probably needs to check with the builder up front. Are you going to include that so that everybody, no, and somebody doesn't have a $28,000 surprise Correct. <laughs> at yes. the end? You can pay for anything along the way, cash. And I'll ask Gigi probably to talk about the dirt because that was an expense to us Oh yeah. after we paid so much down, they, they needed more dirt. Yes, exactly. And you didn't know about that up front? You don't until well, they start leveling the land, right? Yeah, well, that's what we were talking about last week, is um, if, you're, if you're building on your own lot, you need to find out there's something called a perk. I don't really get the prop, prop, property's perk got a perk. Test. <laughs> a perk test, yes. And uh, they bring in fill dirt. And I'm talking years ago, a truck of fill dirt was 150 bucks. Now I haven't got a clue what it is. You might know better than I, Connie, but... Um, I actually think we paid $12,000 for the dirt fill that we had. Dirt. And how many trucks? Probably by the time it was all said and done, 10 to 12, I yeah. think. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not... It takes a lot of not, And that was over and above <clears throat> what you're already yeah. paying for the house. That's just yeah. to be able to put a slab on else. the property yeah. before Correct. you can put a slab and all the sticks are coming out of the ground, you know... I, you know, so, so building is a nice option when in the scarcity home market that we're in right now. However, be prepared. And it's got to be somebody who's got deep pockets, right? You, gotta, you have to be able to. You just have to have representation that knows what to ask and when to ask it. Right. Um, I, I know I have a client that closed on the property uh, already. And now they're getting ready to build, and the builder has found turtles on the property. Oh, so my now gosh. to get rid of a turtle is two to five thousand dollars because they're endangered. Yes. They are protected, and that <laughs> they closed. Turtles. And now, how is that the client's problem yes. when they've closed and they didn't build right away? And now turtles are living there, so they're asking them to pay and it's to get rid $5, of them. dollars I know this because it happened uh, um, in a situation I was involved in it, it, per turtle. Yes. Per turtle. It's two to $5,000 <sighs> per turtle to get rid of those turtles. Correct. Correct. So if you've got 
10 turtles there. <laughs> well, in Summerhill House, we, we had, had 27 out. of them. Oh, my oh my We had 27 turtles. Yes. You may want to not when I take was that piece of property. Yeah. Yeah. 27 <laughs> turtles. <laughs> but, but that's a problem. You don't know um, all this come, going into it, looking at raw land. So you, you have to, to really have a good builder um, if you're custom building. It, you know, the, the spec homes work differently because they're in a, usually in a subdivision. Right, mm -hmm. However, they don't have to be. Hernando, they're building on quarter acre lots in out in no okay. HOA, no deed restricted. And it's still a spec home? It's still considered okay. a spec home from the And there's builders. a couple builders around here locally who are doing the exact same thing. If Correct. you have a piece of land, they have a spec home that they will put on it. Correct. They're not going to change anything in there, but they're going to, no. but that is good. And that's an easier way, I think, for people to go. Do you, would you agree, especially <laughs> after everything you're going through right now? <laughs> I wouldn't do it again, <laughs> let me tell you, but uh, I, I am looking forward to getting into my home, but you have to be your own advocate even with the builders we're running into a, a timeline that we should have been in in nine to 12 months and now we're at 15 to 16 right. so and still um, and away. still fighting all the way until the end yeah we did a, a pre-construction to perm loan our interest was included in the loan the builder was to pay our interest up until we got into the house so we're not out of pocket other than the stuff that came upon us that we didn't, that know. didn't know about um, and it wasn't that bad however impact fees are a big chunk of that money so you really want to ask the county the impact fees before you start because that adds to your loan uh, and, and, and one of the things too is where you had a uh, talking about lot and block, those surveys mm -hmm. are a whole different ball game compared to when you're dealing with acreage. Because yeah. acreage, it costs a lot more to survey the property, and if you're splitting lots, that's a whole different ball game too because you have the house that's there in the first place. Now you need a survey not only for that house, but for the property that you are also, also um, going to be building on. If you they're know, like... That, br that brings Separating. up a really good point. And I, don't th and I don't think we hit on that last week when we were talking. Uh, right. What did you say when we were um, pre-show? Pre <laughs> we were like talking about some things. Mm -hmm. Four surveys technically is what you well, need? Well, yes, because you have the survey in the very first place. If we have a survey in the very first place, that includes the entire parcel. So say that parcel, I don't know, uh, say it's 10 acres. Right. So the one person wants to keep five acres, and then they're going to give the other five acres to somebody that wants to build a house. Well, you have to survey this property and this property separately to split the parcels and give each person a parcel identification number. And then once you do that, you still have to have a survey when you're building that um, shows the house, where the house is going to be on the survey. And then once you do that, and the house starts getting built, then you have to have a final as-built survey. So all together, right, so all together you're looking at four surveys, one, one, um, with the dimensions of the house right. on it, and then a final as-built. So that's four surveys if you're talking about splitting a parcel. And, and again, some of the things that people should know yeah. <laughs> before you step into, to, I'm just going to build a house. Mm -hmm. right. Let's talk quick um, about... Um, on the, on the home building, so step number one, surveys. We gotta get surveys and find out, um, and I would imagine step two is get a builder. Get your custom builder person and make sure that the footprint of the house is gonna be okay. And then of course, is the builder the one who's going to let you know how much dirt we're gonna need or? Well, they or can they give you an know? idea, but it, that's part of the problem too, is that they don't know exactly what they're gonna need until the dirt comes in and they do what they need to do with it. So sometimes they have no choice, even if they think, oh, well, we can do 10 loads of dirt. It might end up being, you know, 18, 15. I don't think it'll be eight because they get a, a fairly good idea, but mm -hmm. you just don't know. Um, that's one of the X factors in final construction, so. Um, 
What, yeah. what else, what else, Connie, that, that you wish you knew? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some things that they're taking off the table in those spec homes, of course, um, like backsplash, as I was just told, after the client looked at the house, purchased it, you know, well, is under contract with it, that now they uh, are giving credits because they can't get materials. So um, they're also having bidding wars. The spec homes um, are in, you're in line with no money down to start and then when a house comes available you're in a bidding war that's how they're working the mm -hmm. high increased prices right now um, most uh, the custom built homes are increasing six months uh, you know six weeks at a time right now why supplies are still going up so you know we're hoping to get this one guy signed under contract at the lower price but if they have a price increase, and then once you sign the contract, you only have 75 days to close, or they can go back with another price increase. So all along, you're not linked in to knowing exactly what you're gonna pay for this, and wow. you're only approved for so much, it may take your client out of the ballpark. I mean, we had one that canceled on us because the prices went up so high, right. she couldn't afford it anymore, right. the payment. So. It's a lot, um, definitely, you, you know, you want, you want your agent to go to the builder with you to find out what kind of home they like anyhow to right. start, um, if a custom build or a spec home, and then you definitely want to get the lender involved because you want to know how much your client is able to go up because it is going to actually go up at some point when you, you find out impact fees. And do that. you recommend, tell, obviously as an agent, telling your client this right up front when they sit there and say, Connie, I'm just so frustrated, I can't find a house. Can you just yeah. find me a piece of land and let's build a house? Yeah, because they need the agent too to buy the land. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, yeah. in the MLS or what, however you find it, but you're going to need that agent to write the contract on that to get the land accepted first if it's not in a, a lot that they're building on already. So builders have lots available with the home prices, roughly, you know, half an acre, 40000 right, right now so uh, and under, but they are building and they charge you the land price on top of their base package. Um, and it just depends on a, if you want a pool package, it's fifty thousand dollars right now. So you know, I was just talking to somebody that has actually uh, bought a property, just exactly what you're talking about, and found out that this huge parcel that they had purchased, a lot of it's wetlands, yeah, and it's not buildable. Yep. So their whole backyard isn't as as they they can't do what they had planned on doing which was building their house and then having a place for the mom and a place for the other mom oh. and so there was a lot of things that they couldn't do cuz you need to make sure what you're buying is buildable so, so that's yeah. so that and that brings up a good point so whose responsibility is that did they do this without an agent by this piece of land? That I don't know. Yeah. I'm not so positive. in the contract. Want, because that's something that you as an agent would look for, right? If they said, we're, this is our plan. Because people usually do, right? Oh, we want to build a house and eventually a place for my mother and my mother-in-law. You know, that kind of a thing. So when you write the contract as an agent on the land anyhow, there is a feasibility study period. So okay. the builder can go out to the land and make sure it's buildable on mm -hmm. there. You can get a survey done. Just depends on how many days you put in that feasibility study. So it's so almost like they your, go out your home inspection, for the turtles. It's your land inspection. Absolutely right? <laughs> correct. And and that is all within that amount of time, so you can back out if you can't build on it. I, oh, I had a go. gentleman that did it and decided to resell the land right now and just buy a spec home somewhere because. Mm -hmm. It was um, the survey costs to find out if you can build, if they need a, a stem wall, whatever, because you know, um, a, a wall because it is wetland or whatever behind it. So um, that cost could be increased. So wow. during the feasibility study is when you ask your builder, they go out to the land, they look at it, make sure they can put a home on there and it's enough in that. Well, that's why you need a, a professional like mm -hmm. Connie to be able to find a a property for you because she knows this kind of stuff. I mean, that you learn something new every day, and I specifically mm -hmm. just learned a, something right now. Yeah, I know. I didn't know about that either. Mm -hmm. So that uh, that does make me feel much better. About how long does that is that feasibility? You can write study? however long. Usually, okay. 15 days. You know, yeah. 30 days to give a builder um, a chance to go out. So, do you recommend also getting before? 
um, even like you know buying a piece of land you as an agent would you before writing a contract on buying buying this piece of land would you want to put a builder with them <laughs> with a your absolutely client? so have your builder lined up and then Correct. find the land <laughs> well for starters you're going to go into a custom built or you're going to go into a spec home and you may not like their models that they're they're offering right. so you sure. actually want to go around to the builders with your agent first um, and look at their homes and decide the quality of the builder and that anyhow um, and then decide if, if they have a lot available they'll let you know at that time if not um, you know you know in a spec home where you're going to be building if you want that area custom built homes are a little bit different because you can buy your own land but you definitely want an agent you definitely want a builder involved you want to pick the the builder and then go after the land if that's what you're looking I'm for. I'm a little bit nervous now because I have um, I have an agent who some people moving from California and they bought a piece of land already mm -hmm. and they, and now they're looking for builders mm -hmm. well it can be done it can be done probably way past their feasibility time limit though because mm -hmm. of you know, what if what Yeah, if but then they can sell the lot. Then they yeah, can sell. Dirt's dirt, you know. Yeah. It's worth dirt's worth dirt. what it's it's worth, uh, it's worth something to somebody, exactly. right? Exactly. In a forty thousand dollar lot, what you're talking about on I live in the Gulf Harbor subdivisions in Seaforest and that property, those lots are like gosh, it depends exactly where it's at, mm -hmm. but even the dirt's like a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now. So Yeah. Yeah. Before I mean, you even start, <laughs> it can be sold, but you you want to have yeah somebody from the beginning that knows about the property and the builders out there. They're not all the same. Mm -hmm. They're not all the same. The materials that they use are different. The look is different. The models are different. Uh, the customer so you, service is different. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's a biggie. And this right? is just from my experience. <laughs> and that's a biggie. You want, you want a, a builder that's going to be responsive and answer your questions and, you know. Communication. It's a biggie. Key. In anything. <laughs> So um, it, we're co quickly running out of time. Any last Again. minute um, tips for any realtors out there who are working with people who want to buy a piece of land to build a house? Good luck. It's tough. There you go. Oh. It's very tough in this market right there now, even the building. Even mm -hmm. the building. Even the so building. Not, that I'm, not that I'm saying discourage them from building, but um, walk in with your eyes wide open. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Do your research on it, right? Um, make sure your clients are well versed on what. Make sure there's a huge buffer in there because there's going to be unforeseen costs. You know, a lot of in the in the lending industry, you know, we always put a buffer in for um, cost overruns because it's true. It's real. They happen. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank you, Connie, so much for being here. Um, we appreciate that. And Gigi, thanks for co-hosting uh, with me again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that part. I only get to hang back and watch what's going on for a lot of it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's been fun. Thank Thanks you. for all of your um, your expertise on that. Thank so you. just real quick, um, did want to mention our charity of choice, uh, West Pasco Business Association. We do still have heart money available. So if you people out there know of anyone who is struggling with their rent payments, um, due to COVID related issues, it's coming back again. We were talking about that too. It seems to rear up here and there. But anyway, we have money available. So if you do know anyone, please go to WPBA.biz and we can possibly help them pay their rent. Thanks everybody for watching. We appreciate you. Share us, like us, get it out there. We are today and every day. Moving forward. <laughs> we'll see everybody right. next week. I've Bye -bye. been practicing.